bring in our tech editor, Dan Howley. Good morning, Dan. So, you know, Good. people hear this, they go, you know, why does it matter to me, right? Isn't this us behind the scenes stuff between Intel and Apple? What do these processors now being made by Apple mean for you and me? Yeah, this is a big change, Lexus, uh, from what we've seen for the last, you know, 14 uh, years for Apple. They've been using Intel chips since then. Prior to that, they used their PowerPC chips. Uh, and this is a way for Apple to really bring all of its kind of uh, you know, third party uh, partners in house, more or less, uh, cutting out Intel, ensuring that they can build their own ARM based chips. Uh, Tim Cook had a little bit to say uh, in introducing this. Let's take a look. When we look ahead, we envision some amazing new products and transitioning to our own custom silicon is what will enable us to bring them to life. At Apple, integrating hardware and software is fundamental to everything we do. That's what makes our products so great. And silicon is at the heart of our hardware. So having a world-class silicon design team is a game changer. So yes, this is a, a big change for Apple uh, as far as the actual silicon. They're using ARM-based processors. It's the same that they use in the iPhone and iPad, uh, Apple Watch. They've been using these for a long time, 10 generations in the iPhone now. Uh, and what uh, Tim Cook and Co. said was that this will allow them to provide better battery life over what Intel chips can do, as well as better performance. Uh, specifically, they point to graphics performance. Now, when it comes to ARM-based chips, we have seen some in regular computers, uh, laptops mostly so far, uh, but the performance hasn't been what it could be from an Intel chip. That specifically comes in Windows machines uh, that we've seen with ARM-based chips, but Apple has the experience with this. Uh, they have written their operating systems to work specifically with this. Uh, so that's going to be a really big change. Uh, and we'll see how that performance pulls up. But, you know, during a, uh, a demo, uh, head of software at Apple, Craig Federighi, showed uh, Adobe's Lightroom, uh, Photoshop, Apple's own Final Cut Pro running 4K video, three instances of 4K video, editing 4K video on the fly, uh, as well as games running uh, on this kind of uh, Mac running. Uh, what was an A12Z uh, Apple processor. So it will be interesting to see how good these are. But from the look of it, it seems as though they'll have the performance to back up what Tim Cook is promising. Sounds like a big upcoming hit to my wallet, Dan. Um, but at the end of the day, isn't this just about Apple saving billions of dollars by not working with Intel, and then taking that money, buying back their stock and boosting their dividend? It is partially uh, that, uh, obviously. Uh, they also put a ton of money into R&D, so some of this could go there. But I think when it comes to the performance, that's, you know, these things have to sell, right? And so Intel chips haven't been uh, evolving uh, as they could for the past few years. They've been stuck in a rut, essentially, at Intel. Uh, and Apple seems to want to just go past that. And, you know, these ARM-based chips have been advancing uh, at a you know, surprising clip. Uh, you can already run high-powered apps, games on the iPad Pro. And so they're saying, look, if we can do that on a, on a machine that's, you know, as thin as a tablet, what do you think we can do with a laptop or full-blown desktop? And I think that's going to prove that Apple has made the right decision here. But again, we have to see this in the wild, not just a, you know, virtual tech demo to ensure that it actually is what Apple promises. So, Dan, we know that for the first time ever, Apple's developers conference had to happen virtually uh, because of the pandemic. I, I'm curious your thoughts on that pre-recorded demonstration as opposed to the walk-on conventional stage presentation uh, that Tim Cook would usually do. You know, surprisingly, it was, in my mind, better. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy going out to uh, Apple's headquarters, seeing, uh, you know, the, the folks in the stage. You know, you can see everyone in person. Uh, Tim Cook, uh, Craig Federighi, uh, everybody else who's on uh, Apple's, uh, you know, executive team board members, uh, they usually sit front row uh, at these events. And it's, you know, just fun to see them kind of interacting with each other and then being able to check out the products in person. But usually for WWDC, it's more about briefings and then, uh, you know, checking out the demo software uh, briefly. Not really hardware. Uh, obviously, there was none really uh, talked about uh, being debuted outside of these chips, which we probably wouldn't have been able to see to begin with. Uh, but I think they did a really good job here. You know, this is something that a lot of other companies are working on doing. Uh, we could see this kind of becoming a norm going forward. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was a little bit of a slicker way to start things. 
who knows when we go back to normal, how they're going to do it. I have to think it's still going to be a, a on the stage kind of presentation. All right, Dan Howley, thanks for that. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.